Hello all, thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. It's September the 13th today. Our readings will come from Isaiah chapters 12, 13 and 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're actually going to finish the book of 2 Corinthians today. Tomorrow we'll begin in the book of Galatians, or Paul's letter to the church in Galatia. We'll also read from Proverbs chapter 23 today. And although we've finished the book of Psalms in our daily Bible readings, Today I encourage you to read Psalm chapter 57, verses 1 to 11. I'll be reading from the Berean Standard Bible. Now let's ask God for his blessing. Lord God, please bless this reading of your word to me and to those who are following along. In Jesus' name, Amen. Alright, before we go into the Old Testament, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, starting in verse 1 it says, This is the third time I am coming to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I already warned you to the warned you the second time I was with you, so now, in my absence, I warn those who sinned earlier and everyone else. If I return, I will not spare anyone, since you are not demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you, for he was indeed crucified in weakness, yet he lives. By God's power, and though we are weak in Him, yet by God's power we will live with Him to serve you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Can't you see for yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless you actually fail the test? And I hope you will realize that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not that we will appear to have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even if we appear to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. In fact, we rejoice when we are weak, but you are strong, and our prayer is for your perfection. This is why I write these things while absent, so that when I am present I will not need to be severe in my use of authority that the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. And this is Paul's benediction and farewell. Verse 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for perfect harmony. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And I say amen to that. Now let's go back into the Old Testament, starting in chapter 12 of Isaiah, verse 1. In that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has also become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the springs of salvation, and on that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make his works known among the peoples, declare that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the earth. Cry out and sing, O citizen of Zion, for great among you is the Holy One of Israel. Chapter 13 This is the burden against Babylon that Isaiah son of Amos received. Raise a banner on a barren hilltop. Call aloud to them, wave your hand, that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have even summoned my warriors, to execute my wrath and exult in my triumph. Listen, a tumult on the mountains, like that of a great multitude. Listen, an uproar among the kingdoms, like nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts is mobilizing an army for war. They are coming from faraway lands, from the ends of the heavens. The Lord and the weapons of his wrath to destroy the whole country. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore all hands will fall limp, and every man's heart will melt. Terror, pain, and anguish will seize them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look at one another, their faces flushed with fear. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning, burning anger, 
to make the earth a desolation and to destroy the sinners within it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will end the haughtiness of the arrogant and lay low the pride of the ruthless. I will make man scarcer than pure gold and mankind rarer than the gold of Ophir. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts on the day of his burning anger. Like a hunted gazelle, like a sheep without a shepherd, each will return to his own people, each will flee to his native land, whoever is caught will be stabbed, and whoever is captured will die by the sword. Their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses will be looted, and their wives will be ravished. Behold, I will stir up against them the Medes, who have no regard for silver and no desire for gold. Their bows will dash young men to pieces. They will have no mercy on the fruit of the womb. They will not look with pity on the children. And Babylon, the jewel of the kingdoms, the glory of the pride of Chaldeans, of the Chaldeans, will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. She will never be inhabited or settled from generation to generation. No nomad will pitch his tent there. No shepherd will rest his flock there. But desert creatures will lie down there, and howling creatures will fill her houses. Ostriches will dwell there, and wild goats will leap about. Hyenas will howl in her fortresses, and jackals in her luxurious palaces. Babylon's time is at hand, and her days will not be prolonged. And chapter 14 starts by saying, for the Lord will have compassion on Jacob once again. He will choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The foreigner will join them and unite with the house of Jacob. The nations will escort, escort Israel and bring it to its homeland. Then the house of Israel will possess the nations as men servants and maid servants in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. On the day that the Lord gives you rest from your pain and torment, and from the hard labor into which you were forced, you will sing the song of contempt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, and how his fury has ended. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. It struck the peoples in anger with unceasing blows. It subdued the nations in rage with relentless persecution. All the earth is at peace and at rest. They break out in song. Even the cypresses and cedars of Lebanon exult over you, since you have been made low. No woodcutter comes against us. Shell beneath is eager to meet you upon your arrival. It stirs the spirits of the dead to greet you, all the rulers of the earth. It makes all the kings of the nations rise from their thrones. They will all respond to you, saying, You too have become weak as we are. You have become like us. Your pomp has been brought down to shell, along with the music of your harps, maggots are your beard, and worms your blanket. How you have fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn! You have been cut down to the ground, O destroyer of nations. You sit in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you will be brought down to shell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will stare, they will ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made the kingdoms tremble? Who turned the world into a desert and destroyed its cities? Who refused to let the captives return to their homes? All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your grave like a rejected branch, covered by those slain with the sword and dumped into a rocky pit like a carcass trampled underfoot. You will not join them in burial, since you have destroyed your land and slaughtered your own people. The offspring of the wicked will never again be mentioned. Prepare a place to slaughter his sons for the iniquities of their forefathers. They will never rise up to possess a land or cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord of hosts. I will cut off from Babylon her name and her remnant, her offspring and her posterity, declares the Lord. I will make her a place for owls and for swamplands. I will sweep her away with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, Surely, as I have planned, so will it be. As I have purposed, so will it stand. 
I will break Assyria in my land, I will trample him on my mountain, his yoke will be taken off my people and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the plan devised for the whole earth, and this is the hand stretched out over all the nations. The Lord of hosts has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is outstretched, so who can turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died, this burden was received. Do not rejoice, all you Philistines, that the rod that struck you is broken, for a viper will spring from the root of the snake and a flying serpent from its egg. Then the firstborn of the poor will find, find pasture and the needy will lie down in safety, but I will kill your root by famine and your remnant will be slain. Wail, O gate, cry out, O city, mount away, all you Philistines, for a cloud of smoke comes from the north and there are no stragglers in its ranks. What answer will be given to the envoys of that nation? The Lord has founded Zion, where his afflicted people will find refuge. And now let's go to Proverbs chapter 23, reading verses 9 to 11. So these are sayings 10 and 11. So saying number 10, Do not speak to a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Saying number 11, Do not move an ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless, for their redeemer is strong, he will take up their case against you. And with that being read, we finish today's Bible reading. Tune in tomorrow as we continue in the ninth month of our one-year Bible reading plan. We'll begin in the book of Galatians tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a very joyful um, epistle of Paul's, that is. So tune in tomorrow, go out and share the love of Christ today, if it's in the morning that you're listening to this, go out and share the love of Christ, go and share the gospel, even if it's to one person, may God give me the strength to do that as well. Well, as we close, we pray as usual, pray with me, come soon Lord Jesus, Amen.